Good morning. Wang Gong asked me to give a talk today with an overview of the chapter we're going to be studying this year called Doctrine. And um, I want to give you an overview of where doctrine fits in. So the scriptures of Wan Buddhism is divided into two books. The first book, the principal book of Wan Buddhism, is the kind of ground level teachings of the master and his disciples about the basics, the everyday practice of Wan Buddhism, how to do it and what it means. Um, and then the second book, uh, the scripture of the founding master, is actually a collection of teachings that have been edited by topic. So this particular um, chapter is called Doctrine. And, um, and as, I, as I read it, I, I realized that um, even though I had read it many times before, reading it to get an overview, I could see that this chapter was a sort of 10 feet up view of our teachings. And in that way, was is very informative. In fact, I often think that this would be a good start for anyone coming to Wan Buddhism to read this chapter first because it explains things in a way that differentiates Wan Buddhism from other Asian traditions and other Buddhist traditions, but in a way that also highlights the meanings and, and special nature of Wan Buddhism. So, in this chapter, we hear about how Wan Buddhism um, is, the motto of Wan Buddhism is to create a world where we take advantage of material cultivation, but also spiritual cultivation to balance those. And so that's in this chapter. But also, why do we why do we enshrine Ilwan Song, the circle image, versus a Buddha image? It's described in this chapter. Um, and also, another aspect of this chapter is it's somewhat outward facing. So it's as if uh, Master Sote San is writing this not only for the practitioners, definitely is, but also how we would explain ourselves to the world. So Wang Gong asked me to not only give you this overview, but also to um, pick some, um, some uh, passages that would uh, it appeal to me and might demonstrate some of these things to you. So um, the first one I'm going to read you is 29. The founding master asked the congregation at a meditation hall, if someone were to ask you, what are you learning here? What, how would you answer? A member of the congregation said, I would answer that we're learning the three great powers. Another member said, I would answer that we're learning the essential way of human life. After hearing conflicting answers from several other people, the founding master said, although all your answers are applicable, I will elaborate a bit. So listen carefully. As a rule, whatever answer one gives should be appropriate to the questioner's character and attitude at the time. But to answer in general terms, I would say that I am teaching about the Dharma of the mind's functioning. To answer more specifically, I teach the knowledgeable how to use knowledge, the powerful how to use power, the wealthy how to use wealth, the resentful how to live a life of gratitude, those who lack merit how to make merit, those who live a life dependent on other power to rely on self-power, those reluctant to learn how to learn, those reluctant to teach how to teach, those lacking public spirit how to be motivated to have public spirit. In brief, I teach others to make the most of all their talents, material wealth, and surroundings in accordance with the right way. So you can see in this passage it's outward facing, but also expresses the breadth and depth of the Wan Buddhist uh, um, vision of where we fit into the world and what we're trying to accomplish in, in our teachings. Um, I wanted to read you something about, um, um, about the relationship between Ilwan Song and Sakyamuni Buddha. 
The person asked, What is the relationship between Ilwan Song and Sakyamuni Buddha? Founding Master answered, Ilwan is the source of all truth, and Sakyamuni Buddha is the teacher who awakened to that truth and then taught it to us. Even though this world may have wonderful truth, that truth would be of no use to us if there were not a person who discovered and taught it. Even if Sakyamuni Buddha had come to this world, if there was not this truth of Ilwan Song, he could not have become Sakyamuni Buddha and would have no material to teach for 49 years. Thus we designate Ilwan Song, the Dharmakaya Buddha, as the symbol of truth and Sakyamuni Buddha as our foundational teacher and worship together the Dharmakaya Tathagata and the Rupakaya Tathagata. However, this is an explanation that is given from the perspective of the distinction between Ilwan Song and Sakyamuni Buddha. From the perspective of the truth that is beyond all distinctions, you must understand the indivisibility of Ilwan Song and Sakyamuni Buddha. So, if it's not obvious, you know, Master Sote San is saying that um, Ilwan Song is the truth of the universe. It's the truth that can't be expressed in words except by a great teacher. And if it hadn't been there to start with, Sakyamuni Buddha, who was our great first teacher, wouldn't have been able to find it and speak it. So here's my little obsessive concern. So some, he was talking about, uh, there was a talk between one of the members and uh, Master Sote San about Yuan Song and um, how we understand it and how we make use of it. And um, he, the, me the member asked, then that are such truths, awesome powers, and methods of practice contained in the shape of the Yuan Song diagram itself? The founding master replied, that circular image is a model for teaching the true Ilwan. It's like pointing at the moon with your finger. Your finger is not the real moon. In the same way, a practitioner must discover the true Ilwan through the model of Ilwan's song. Guard Ilwan's true nature and practice Ilwan's perfect mind. Then the truth of Ilwan's song in our lives will mesh perfectly. So why did I pick this out? Um, I sometimes think people focus on the symbol of the circle as if that is Ilwan, as if that is what we're trying to find, a circle. But Ilwan, Ilwan's song is a circle that we can see and it is a symbol. Ilwan is a circle with an infinite diameter. Everything is, is, is a part of Ilwan. And Ilwan is outside and inside of us. And so I think it's, you know, I'm glad we have enshrined Yohan Song. It, it gives us something that is both concrete and symbolic that we can use to understand our practice and um, our vision. But I think it's really important to realize Yohan Song is a symbol and Yohan is the universe. So thank you very much for listening to me.